What's going on, Geminis? Gem Mint here. I'm joined by a very special guest, Very Gary. What's going on? What's going on, man? I'm ready to get into this list. We're going to jump into the top 10 most expensive X-Men key issues, so stay tuned. All right, guys, before we jump into it, we are going to announce the winner for the giveaway that me and Gary announced in the most affordable X-Men list. You ready, Gary? I'm ready. The winner is going to receive these three books. What do you got there? We have X-Factor 15, where Angel gets his wings cut off. We have New Mutants Annual Number 2, first appearance of Psylocke. And we have X Men 282, first appearance of Bishop. All right, so we did a random YouTube comment generator out of 497 unique comments. The winner is Driven from Desperation, man. Congratulations. Shoot me an email at gemmintc at gmail.com and we'll get these books out to you ASAP. All right, so before we jump into this list, you guys make sure you're subscribed to the channel, notification bells on, and hit the like button. Gary, what giveaway are we going to tease in this video? All right, so we're actually teasing our next set of videos. So what we're going to be doing is some Spider-Man keys. Amazing Spider-Man 365, first appearance of Spidey 2099. We have Amazing Spider-Man 344, the first appearance of Cletus Cassidy, who ends up becoming Carnage. So watch out for this book on the spec market. And Amazing Spider-Man Annual 21, the wedding. So guys, stay tuned until the end of the video. We'll let you know what you got to do to enter this giveaway. All right, Gary, are you ready to count down our list? I am ready to get into this. So guys, this is the most expensive X-Men key issues. We figured it would be fun to do this since we did the most affordable. Now here's the thing, the top five are easy. They're, well, the top five are easy. One's gonna sneak in there that you wouldn't expect, but it's kind of a tricky little book. Yeah, and it's kind of tricky because when we start dealing with Silver Age books, that are mixed with Bronze Age books. Do you go by raw sales? Do you go by 9.8? Do you go by 7.0? So we kind of just picked books based on like their max value and there's some kind of curveballs in there. So let's just jump right in to number 10. You want to kick it off, Gary? Yeah, so what we did too is we priced everything at the GPA around 7.0, but again, like Jim's saying, when it comes to the moderns, we kind of gave it a little bit of a curve. So number 10 on the list is X-Men 101. This is the first appearance of Phoenix. This is a great book. It's a great cover. Chris Claremont, you have Jean Grey emerging as the Phoenix after this crash in the ocean. The book goes for $238 on average for a 7.0. However, what's it hitting for in a 9.8? 9.8 is going for $3,100. Damn, so this is a book that you can get in and it, and it can come in at the bottom of the list here. If you want to get the US 7.0 or a grade around there, but once you start jumping into 9.8s, then you're going super expensive. All right, number nine on the list, we have X-Men number 14. This is the first appearance of Sentinel. Now this book in a 7.0, because it's silver, you're gonna see a little bit of a price disparity with the bronze, but this book in a 7.0 comes in at $344. Which is not bad. Not for a cent, that's a, that's a key. That's a big X-Men key, one of the Biggest, baddest villains in the X-Men universe. Yeah, they're a mainstay. You see them in all forms of media, even up to the most recent movie releases. Uh, the Sentinels are every part of the X-Men lore as much as mutants are. Now, number eight on the list, we have X-Men issue 94. X-Men 94 is a real important book. It's the first appearance of the new team in the X-Men title. So at this time, the X-Men have only had reprints. I think it lasted for, what, 20 or 30 issues or so? Something like that, around the late, mid to late issue number 60-something all the way till 93. To 93. Then, Giant Size X-Men 1 comes out with a new team. It starts a whole new story with X-Men. It's the first X-Men book that came out that hasn't been a reprint. And then this book, X-Men 94, follows directly after that with that new team. And I think it's even uh, dubbed all new, all different X-Men at the top. Yeah, this is, a, this is a great book. This is affordable at $368 in a 7.0. Now here's the, here's the mind blown part. We talked about Phoenix in a 9.8 at $3,100. The last sale on X-Men 94 in a 9.8 went for $14,600. Dang, that's crazy, man. This book is going to heat up too because this is what happens. You have your Hulk 181s that you get out priced. Then people start jumping over to Giant Size X-Men 1. That book starts to blow up and then you get priced out of that. This is like the poor man's Giant Size X-Men 1. This is a book that suffers like we talked about in the last video too with a bad cover. 
I don't know if anyone really enjoys this cover. And because the cover is black, it is hard to get in that 9.8, which is why it gets that really, really high price point. All right, now, number seven on the list, we have X-Men 12. This is the first appearance of the Juggernaut. This is another major, major X-Men villain. He's been around since X-Men 12, the beginning. Uh, this book in a 7.0 GPA is at $677. Dang, so now we're starting to get up there. Now we're starting to get where it's kind of getting expensive to get you a... Uh, uh, a decent grade copy so that's a hard cover too man it's that red cover back in the day you had like these very solid color covers and it's hard to get those things clean without spine ticks yeah and again x-men 12 you're going back to the 60s these are old books yeah man kane marco uh stepbrother to charles xavier he's actually not a mutant he's powered by the gem of Sidorak, which gives him the unstoppable power of the juggernaut it makes him the avatar of the Sidorak. And uh, just another mainstay. He's still here to this day. So number six, GPA is at $1 higher than number seven. So X-Men 12, which was first juggernaut. Now we're going to X-Men number three, first appearance of the blob. So X-Men number three is a cool cover. It's often for me, when I see that at a glance, I always confuse it for X-Men one. It's that similar white background. You have the X-Men on the front. And it's cool to see like one of their first villains. I mean, their first villain was Magneto. Then you have Magneto with the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and then right there you got the Blob. So numbers 10 through 6 are a little sporadic. They kind of pro threw you off a little bit. We're going to go 5 down to 1, and these are a little, other than 1, one book here, uh, these are almost pretty obvious. Yeah, these are going to be the ones that you expect. We're going to jump in at number 5, and it's a book that I already mentioned, Giant Size X-Men 1. This book is the second full appearance of Wolverine, first appearance of Storm, first appearance of Colossus, first appearance of Nightcrawler, first appearance of Thunderbird, Bird, and even they're sneaking this one in here first appearance of Ilyana Rasputin as a child wow and this is an awesome book because they're all on the cover besides Ilyana Rasputin all on the cover it's this kind of I don't know it's kind of like a, a unicorn of a book it's this one shot type of book it's a square bound book all these first appearances it's really a big Wolverine key as well and in a 7.0 it's averaging right now $1,439. White cover too. You see this book faded a lot and off-white a lot on that cover. You know what? Uh, CGC is pretty lenient on pressing too. I've seen this square bound book press awkwardly and it still uh, gets pretty decent grades. But awesome book to own. It's, it's going up obviously with uh, all the uh, speculation with the MCU. But uh, awesome book to have. You want to kick off number four? Number four is another big, huge key. This is actually x-men number four so x-men number four is a pretty cool book because you have a couple of things going on you got the second appearance of magneto you have the first appearance of scarlet witch and quicksilver plus you have the first appearance of the brotherhood of evil mutants who is it toad and who else there's somebody else in there those are the only ones that matter toad scarlet witch quicksilver and this book was always kind of like an okay book but then who would have thought that Scarlet Witch would have played such a big role in the movies, and it really helped propel this book to where it's at now. What's it going for in a 7-0? X-Men 4 in a 7-0 is going for $1,470, just a tick above giant size in that same grade. Awesome book. It's issue number four of the X-Men. It's an uh, early single-digit issue from the 60s. Awesome first appearances and a good Magneto book as well. Number three is going to throw everyone, everyone off. Number three is Iron Fist 14, first appearance of Victor Creed, a.k.a. Sabretooth. Now, the weird thing about this book is the actual Iron Fist 14 doesn't GPA very high in a 7.0. However, this book does come in a 35 cent price variant, and it is hard to find, and it is very expensive. And it goes for $2,000. Now, Gary said when we drop this video, everyone's going to run to their copy of Iron Fist 14 and see if it's the 35 cent Canadian variant. It's kind of like uh, the Star Wars 1 book has one of those as well, that they're super pricey, even in like lower grades. But uh, Iron Fist 14, we definitely wanted to throw it in there. Sabretooth is definitely one of the top X-Men villains, uh, number one Wolverine villain, and uh, a very expensive book if you have that variant and it's uh, graded in a 7.0 or higher. And that 2000 price point is actually from like 2015, I think, or 16. So there's a chance that this book is even higher than that. They just don't come around that often. No, everyone's checking right now. They're paused the video. <laughs> now that you're back and you're disappointed that you don't have the uh, 35 cent variant, uh, number two on the list, of course, is Incredible Hulk 181, first full appearance of Wolverine. 
This book has gone nothing but up. I personally think there's even more room for this book because it's gone up just off of the speculation and then the eventual acquisition of Fox by Disney. Now you're starting to hear about uh, mutants appearing in the MCU, Rogue and Gambit and all this stuff. When they finally cast Wolverine, this book is going to go up again. And this book was kind of a unicorn in a sense anyway. It always went up every year regardless if there was movie hype or not. Even after a ton of movies where Wolverine uh, was in. How many movies did he play in? Like over 10 movies or? 10 or something. Yeah, I think it's somewhere around there. Yeah, so it, it always went up even when there was bad movies like Wolverine Origins. And a lot of movie hype books crash after a bad movie. Like look at Apocalypse. But this book always goes up. It's a safe bet. And a 7.0 right now, it's averaging $2,685. Now keep an eye on this book in raw condition. You always want to check for that Marvel value stamp in the back. Sometimes it's cut out and it just sabotages the price of this book. Definitely. You want to always make sure that you buy a blue label graded. You don't want to get it as a green qualified label that's missing the value stamp. This is a book that is readily available. There are more copies out there. I don't want to say overpriced, but it's definitely worth more than it should be based on how many copies are available. Yeah, this is not a hard book to find. It's Sometimes you do run into the Marvel value stamp problem, but again, there's a lot of blue label Hulk 181s out there. Before we jump into number one, Gary, let's tell them what they got to do to enter this giveaway for these Spider-Man keys. All right, in order to enter for this giveaway for the Spider-Man keys, you have to be subscribed to this channel, subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment down below, Spider-Man giveaway, with maybe a little fun comment on how much you enjoy this video. Definitely, and what we're gonna do is, Gary and I will let this video ride for a little while, and then we're gonna record a top 10 most affordable Spider-Man keys, and we'll announce the winner during that video. So make sure you guys do that, and let's get into the number one. It's no surprise, everybody is expecting it. What do we got for number one, Gary? Number one is, of course, X-Men number one. You can't beat X-Men number one. You have all of the first appearances, except for Professor X, right on the cover. Magneto, Iceman, Marvel Girl, Beast, Cyclops, and Angel. And it's the number one issue. It's got everything going for it. And a 7-0, it's going for $15,624. This book too, the cover is fantastic. They're all on the cover. It's a great cover. I, I, it's, it's the perfect combination, like Fantastic Four number one. They're all there. Like Giant Size X-Men number one. It's just that it's an older book and it's really the true first of this entire franchise. Awesome book. Now, I don't expect anyone here to be buying 7.0s. I think if you can get in at like a 2.0 blue label or better, you're, you're a good bet. I mean, even a 1.0 that presents well is a very good entry-level book in this type of key. Yeah, this is a book that, again, blew up overnight. Not It was already expensive, but once Disney acquired Fox or the rumors started swirling, you saw it climbing and it climbed fast. Yeah, this was a book that was good to get into way back when uh, everyone was buying Hulk one, uh, Hulk 1s, Amazing Fantasy 15s, Amazing Spider-Man number 1s. This book was always greatly undervalued in comparison to other key Marvel books from that same era. Because this is from what, like September of 1963, I think? Something, yeah, it's 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 right around there. This book, I gotta say, and, and this is me just off the cuff guessing, this was probably the second least expensive big early like uh, Marvel key next to Daredevil. Daredevil was probably the bottom. I was going to say, it, it, it was up there with a Daredevil 1, which is crazy. Seven first appearances, which all these characters are still around today. They're still relevant. I was going to say the same thing. Totally, man. This is, a, this is an awesome book. It's one of my favorite books, and it's getting crazy expensive because of the MCU hype, but... Uh, that's the top 10 list, man. I know that there's other books in there that we could have uh, included. We had some honorable mentions. We were going to talk about the first appearance of what? Uh, Magic? Magic. We had Sauron, Havoc, uh, Banshee. I don't think Sauron or Havoc. I don't think Sauron is really as relevant as like Juggernaut or the Sentinels. Is he more than Blob? I don't know. Blob had the number three issue going for him, you know? Yeah, there was a couple things going with that book. That's another, you know, we always talk about covers, but that's a good cover. Let us know what books you would have included in the top 10 down in the comments below. Make sure to enter into that giveaway and join us next time when we do our top 10 most affordable Spider-Man keys. Stay minty fresh. Peace. All right, so right now let's just do the drawing for the uh, winner of the three books, right? Now, hold on. So let's draw the winner and then we'll, we'll do the announcement. Okay. All right, hang on one second. 
So we have 497 unique commenters. And the winner is... Driven from Desperation. That looks like a familiar name. Let me take a screenshot. All right, you ready to start? Geminites, what's going on? It's your boy, Gem Mint. Oh, hold on, let's do that over. What's going on, Geminites? Gem Mint here. I'm joined by my guest, but... Hey, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I gotta get on camera mode. All right. Gotta get on camera mode. All right. Ow, now, brown cow. 